Hello, and welcome to the 51st episode of Recluse Horror. This is a daily horror movie review podcast. Uh, So just a little background on the project. Back 318 days ago, on my birthday, I decided I wanted to watch and review a horror movie every single day. I have done so, as I said, for the past 318 days, although only the last 51 have been podcasts. Uh, Before that, it was text reviews. So each episode, I talk about two movies, uh, one of which I've watched that very night, and another which uh, I've reviewed previously in text, in which I just uh, go over whatever impressions I have left, um, aided, of course, by the text review itself. Um, So today I watched a short film called Live Alone from 2015. You can find this on the CZ's World, that's CZS World, one word, uh, YouTube page. Uh, This one was all right. Um, It's definitely not uh, my favorite that I have seen. Uh, There are some pretty obvious problems with it. Um, But uh, it, you know, it, it's, it's, not the worst. Um, Basically, it it follows the story of this person who, as far as I can tell, her only job is taking photos on a fake Pinstagram, or sorry, it's called Pinstagram. It's a fake Instagram website um, that isn't a job as far as I know, but that's what she seems to do. Um, And uh, she's just moved to a new area and started living alone for what seems to be the first time and she's very nervous about it and then it turns into a horror movie so um yeah this one this one had some some pretty big flaws uh i think the one that was the most jarring to me and the the one that i never really got over beginning to end was um the use of of um i guess camera photography uh like like phone camera photography now like i said she she's taking photos for a uh you know a fake um instagram site or app i guess on a phone and um some in some cases what they're doing is they're showing you what she's taking a picture of so you get these you know there's the normal black bar- bars on the top and bottom because it's you know it's a a, a widescreen format Um, but, but then you'll get these other two black bars on the other side because, and because they're showing you the phone camera and like, it's not really a square. It's more of a rectangle, like an upright rectangle. I don't really know how to describe this, but it, you know, it's, it's like the square, almost square photos that you would get on Instagram. Um, and they do it completely at random. Sometimes, like I said, it's when she's taking photos or when, or when she's looking at something as though it's a photo. In those cases, that works fine. But in other cases, it's just like she's just looking in the room. They don't show her pull up her phone. And it's not like she she seems to be... They make a very good case for her, um, you know, saying, like, in her mind that she's taking... She's going to take a picture of this, or, like, is this a good picture to take? So she's looking at it through this lens of, like, is this a good picture for Instagram? um, not Instagram or whatever. Um, and it just doesn't trans, like, it doesn't translate if that's what it is supposed to be. It just seems random. Like, the very first time they use it, it has, it has no context. You haven't heard any dialogue, I don't believe. And they just, they walk into, um, she walks into her apartment. She's got, um, you know, some boxes or something. She sets them down and then she looks back into the room, like the the room that she's just entered. And all of a sudden that comes up and you're like, what is happening? Did they just switch from filming in, you know, widescreen to filming in, in some really tiny, like, like letterbox format? I, I, I don't really understand. Um, and, you know, later on they, they, they explain sort of the, you know, that, that she takes these photos, um, and that's, like, her thing that she does, but, uh, it still doesn't really come across. I think if they, if they were more careful about, like, showing her with a phone in her hand or pulling up her phone and then, like, looking at whatever she's looking at, then, then it would feel more, uh, just natural, and they, they don't, they don't cut the shots together in that way. Um, they, they, in fact, a lot of times she doesn't even have her phone on her. It doesn't appear. It's not, I mean, if she does, it's definitely not in her hand and she's not using it. So, 
Uh, a lot of times it just seems like a random thing. And sometimes it does make sense, even though they haven't shown her with it. Like, she'll be looking at her breakfast, and you know how everybody has those um, Instagram pictures of their breakfast. So it's it's like she's looking at it thinking, like, this is a good picture for Instagram or something. And that those one, those moments I understand, but a lot of the other moments, like, are not that moment. So, I, I don't know. The, the the use of it was really sporadic, and it, it just felt kind of off-putting. Every time it came up, I was like, what's hap- what, What's going on? Why is this? Why why did the color just shift? Oh, they're doing another one of those phone phone camera things, and I don't know. I, it, I just, that, I know they were trying to use it sort of as a feature, like this is something a little bit different, um, and, and I do applaud them for that. But beyond that, I, I think that the execution, the usage was not very good. Uh, I thought the acting was okay. There's really... Only uh, a couple of actors that that have any real screen time at all. Uh, it's not the best, but it's it's definitely acceptable under the circumstances for the most part. Um, I did feel like the the lead actor, uh, the 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 woman who's moving into the apartment, definitely could have uh, stretched her wings a little bit. Uh, you know, with some of those panicked emotions and stuff like that. I felt like it. She wasn't really reading in a way that like was putting you in her shoes. Um, but some of that can be uh, down to filming and stuff as well. It's not simply an in an issue of of uh, her acting. A lot of it is that the, the the shots themselves don't build a ton of tension. Um, I will say that the the video quality on on it is really really good on all of the shots. the The camera work is very good as far as like not being shaky and and stuff like that. Um, it's also not terribly. Uh, you know, innovative or anything. There's no, there's no real tension building shots. There's nothing where they're like, as I recall, anyway, there's no shots where they're like, they're tracking her down, down the hallway, like, you know, running with her. So the camera is moving. So you really get that sense of motion and, and stuff like that. I didn't, I don't remember any of that. It could have been in there. Um, either way that I didn't really get much of a sense of tension out of this, which with this particular storyline, like I honestly should have, um, I, I should have been able to engage a lot more and, and put myself in her, in her position, and I really kind of didn't feel like I, I, I could do that. Most of the dialogue, or most of the, the, um, most of the lines, the, the writing, the script was, uh, was pretty decent. There are definitely a couple of moments where the act, actor wasn't able to, like, really sell the phrasing that was in the script. Like, you could tell that they were just reading, reading the script verbatim as it was, which is fine. I mean, that's, of course, what you're supposed to do. But they weren't able to f- make it feel natural in their particular wording and their cadence. Um, and, and that, it was really only noticeable in, like, one or two places, but, but it was, it was sort of an issue. For the most part, I felt like it was natural enough. Um, they, they did try, uh, visually, they did try to, um, you could tell they were trying to play around with how to do graphics, like screen graphics and stuff like that. So they would show, like, she'd look at her phone and, uh, you know, a little pop-up thing would happen on the screen where it's, you know, right above her phone where it would say, like, you know, plus six followers, plus seven followers, whatever it is, um, which was kind of neat. I thought it was pretty well done. Um, it might have been possibly hard to read for some people, but I, I don't know. I, I think it was fine. I didn't have any trouble reading it. Um, and I wasn't sitting terribly close to my laptop or anything either. So it's probably fine. It's just a little, it could have been a little brighter. I think the, um, the specific graphic could have been a little brighter. It was like kind of a deep blue, uh, for a couple of those shots, I think. And uh, it sort of matched with the the room color a little bit, and so it blended a little bit. Uh, not that that's a totally bad thing, but I think some people might have had trouble seeing exactly what it, you know, what it said. Uh, you know, Sam being somebody who uh, has terrible eyesight and no glasses, I, I'm I usually am try to try to be aware of that whether other people would be able to read it. Uh, regardless, though, the the technique was done well. Uh, it was used well. It didn't. It wasn't terribly distracting, and it was kind of like, oh, that's pretty neat. That's pretty good. I think it did add to the production value a little bit. The lighting uh, and everything was was pretty good. Uh, the the apartment that she's in, obviously, she's just moved in, and she doesn't seem to have a lot of stuff. So the the, the location specifically looked a little sparse uh, in certain places, but that's just bound to happen under those circumstances. And, and it make, it does make sense, at least in this story. She has literally just moved in. We watch her move in. So uh, it's, it's not like you expect that to be completely filled in 
you know, you don't want to necessarily drag in 700,000 boxes. She didn't bring that there on her own. So, you know, adding a bunch more just to fill up that space and make it feel less sparse wouldn't necessarily actually make sense since it seems like everything she brought she brought in her own like car which is not a truck or anything it is a car in her trunk so uh not a problem on there honestly i think like really the 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 biggest problem other than that the weird uh photography uh with with the trying to pretend it was a phone um I, I think the biggest problem was it, it just didn't do a very good job of building intention. I think it didn't give uh, it didn't give an, a few enough moments for uh, all of those moments to really land. I think it needed a little bit of a breath sometimes in between stuff happening or the things happening needed to be emphasized a little stronger, um, either with music, which actually the music the the score was pretty decent. It just like maybe could have been a little bit more tense, um, or with, um, just showing the character's reaction to what's happening to her or how other people are reacting to her saying what's, you know, what she thinks is off and all of that. If they had given just a, you know, a couple of scenes dedicated, a couple of scenes to her reaction and emotion to it, I think that really would have helped out the overall story a lot and put you in her, in her shoes where, you know, she's just trying to, She's just trying to live on her own and she's super nervous about it. And, you know, she starts convincing herself of one thing or another. And, you know, I, I just feel like it, it maybe would have landed a little bit better that way. Um, this is definitely the sort of movie that uh, were it done right, it would totally creep me out. And this one just wasn't able to get there. I don't think it's any, I don't think it's any like particular problem. I think they, these people, it seems like, um, you know, they're sort of, they seemed sort of newer at, at this. They're, they're kind of working on it. This is them learning. And I think this is a very good, uh, a very good place to be with short films. They are learning and you can see the process. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know for that. I think it's a, it's a good step. I think all of these people probably will go on and continue working and will continue, honing their craft a little bit. And I I think they, they, you know, I don't think there's any particular person in in, involved in this. There's this, any particular area where I felt like this person is just in the wrong field. It was always like, this could use some work, but it's not like it's, it's baseline terrible. I don't think anything in this was terrible. It just all needed to be done a little bit better. And that's kind of the, the, that's, again, that's kind of the point of short films. A lot of times is to learn how to do something by doing it which is something I can totally identify with. I have to learn by doing a lot myself. So, you know, obviously you're going to get those, um, you know, those little steps along the way that like you look back on 10 years later and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that was something that like, this was the best I could achieve 10 years ago. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of neat. I actually, on that level, I enjoy watching things like this. Um, seeing people learn is, is, something I really appreciate for whatever reason, just the sort of person I am. So as far as recommendations, I probably can't necessarily recommend this to anyone specifically. Um, uh, Again, I would say film students, it would be a a good exercise to sort of um, watch this and sort of critique what you think you could do better, what you think they could have done better and all of that. But as far as like for enjoyment purposes, I don't think there's too many people um, that really need, need have to log on to YouTube right now and watch this. Um, I wouldn't just dissuade anyone from watching it under any circumstances, but it just, I just didn't quite connect with it on a certain level. So, so I think that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Uh, that was Live Alone from 2015. And once again, you can get that, uh, you can watch that on the, CZ World page, CZ's World page. That's CZS World, one word, uh, YouTube channel. Okay, so the other movie that I wanted to talk about, it's not a great movie, uh, is Blood Valley Seeds Revenge from 2014. Uh, I think it's also called Seed 2 in places, which, of course, I didn't know when I watched this, or I would have probably tried to watch the first one. Um, this movie, it was a particular brand of awful that I really just did not like. It it was, 
it's kind of atrocious. It's it there is probably not one aspect of this of this film that I felt was done completely right and most of them were done very very wrong. So Blood Valley Seeds Revenge is about a woman who's about to get married that takes a road trip with her bridesmaids from her home in Chicago to Las Vegas. On their way back, they're set upon by murderers. This is like I said the sequel to another movie called Seed, uh which I actually haven't seen. But it really, it doesn't seem like it would have made very much difference in how bad this was to, you know, know where this movie came from. Uh, Now, this is not a new premise in the least, but this has to be the very worst version of this attacked in the desert while road tripping subgenre. The plot is incomprehensible. The acting is garbage. The soundtrack ranges from generic to laughable. The dialogue is total gibberish. Basically, the best thing I can say is that the effects are okay and the pacing could be worse. This also hits on one of my, like, really big pet peeves, personally, where the movie just straight up lies to the audience. Um, For instance, a character repeatedly says that they lost one of the victims, which turns out not to be true. Um, You could sort of justify it if there were other victims in their presence or something that, like, they were, some reason that they were trying to mislead someone, but there aren't any other people there and there's no one that they should be doing that to. So there are numerous continuity errors with the plot uh, and the gore and the sets as well, um, with characters tied up and then suddenly not tied up, catastrophic injuries appearing and disappearing at random, uh, characters disappearing and reappearing just as randomly. I mean, it's a nightmare and not in the sort of way that like a horror movie is a nightmare. It's just, it, it's just bad. The movie is plagued with flashbacks and flash forwards, probably because they knew the movie, uh, you know, playing it from beginning to end would be boring gibberish rather than pacing conscious gibberish. Uh, the script keeps trying to surprise you with plot twists, but the twists make no sense and have no justification um, many being utterly predictable while still being basically nonsense, uh, which is pretty hard to pull off if you think about it. They talk around a certain, you know, confession made by one of the characters that seems to have no legal implications, but they never actually talk about what this confession was or show the scene where it happened. Uh, I'm sure this is supposed to play as compelling, but it just doesn't work. Uh, Sadly, that's possibly one of the more ambitious parts of the movie, and it just falls so flat. The acting is annoyingly bad uh, most of the time. There are several points in which the girls absolutely could have struggled and tried to escape, but instead they just sit there and do nothing, not even emoting paralyzing fear or like pain or anything. They just sit there with a blank expression on their face. Conversely, there are other characters who somehow managed to break loose, but the injuries they would have sustained would have made it totally impossible to do anything, but maybe crawl away. And despite that, they're running through the desert and climbing up rocks that would be literally blistering in the summer heat. Barefoot, and in one case, completely nude. The guy who I can only assume is playing Seed is sort of menacing, but it's a lot easier for a character with a weird mankind mask made out of blood-soaked cloth and no more than grunts for lines to be sort of menacing. I feel like that's not really hard to achieve there. The whole thing plays like a particularly shitty ripoff of The Devil's Rejects with none of the charm, humor, shock, acting, production value, or plot coherence. They try to build up to something, but it never pays off. And then, in a mid credit scene, they add one last fuck you of a plot twist that is utterly meaningless and has no justification. Basically, none of the plot has any impact. I've been more moved by stock footage than by this movie. Now, the producer of this movie is Uwe Boll. Um, Uwe Boll. I don't know how it's supposed to be. I think it's Uwe Boll. Um, spelled U-W-E Boll. B-O-L-L, that's his name. You may be familiar with him. He's a famously terrible director, uh, known for making mostly those terrible video game movie adaptations like Alone in the Dark, Far Cry, Blood Rain, uh, and then blaming the people who sold him the rights for the movie being bad. He's also known for fighting viciously with critics about how they felt about his movies and calling more popular Uh, directors like Michael Bay and Eli Roth, and this is a direct quote, these are not words I would say, but 
fucking retards. That's what he calls them. Uh, years ago, he said that if an online petition got a million signatures, he would quit directing. But sadly, I don't think a million people actually know who he is, though many more than that have had to suffer through his garbage movies. He wrote, directed, and produced the first movie, so I'm sure it was every bit as wonderful as this one. There's really not anything good I can say about this. Uh, I know I looked briefly into the the actors in this movie, and there is one that's sort of well-known. Um, w- one of the female actors in this is kind of known for doing a bunch of B-horror stuff. I did not bother to put that in my review because I was... when I, I, I actually had kind of forgotten just how angry this movie made me. But, uh, you know, looking through this review again... Uh, I knew it was bad, but I I forgot how angry it sort of made me just how bad it was and in so many ways. Um, so I, I, I didn't put any of that in there. It's like not worth mentioning. She she doesn't do a good job. She probably does better than some of them. But the the roles, the role is stupid. And, uh, you know, compared to other movies, I feel like, uh, you, you know, if she were in another movie, she would be the worst actor probably in it. Um, and that's probably, that probably sounds pretty, pretty harsh, but I, I think, I think that's probably true. I would be interested in seeing some of her other stuff and seeing, uh, if it, you know, just fits a little better or something like that. I don't know. Maybe in a different sort of B movie, uh, it wouldn't matter that she isn't a good actress, even if she isn't, but I, I don't know. Anyway, I can't understand why anyone would enjoy this, um, but if you did or if you saw the first movie and care to explain anything that might explain what the hell this movie is, I would really love to hear from you. Uh, I suppose if you saw the first one, you might be interested in seeing the sequel, even though you at this point should know it's terrible, but I can't imagine anyone else would have any reason to watch this. Um, This is one of the the worst movies like on a technical and um you know pretty much in on every level it's probably one of the worst made movies it is not the worst movie that i have seen um that is reserved for a different movie which i will actually eventually get to but uh but it's 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 pretty bad there's just there's just no reason to watch this it's sort of exploitative and it it it, it goes it, it tries to be sort of like a I don't I don't even want to try to get into that actually what it's trying to be some of it's spoiler related but but yeah I don't know it just it it is just a really particularly bad trying to be shocking gory sort of horror movie and it's it's I don't know it's not even worth the gore like I said the gore is not very good so it, it it's fine it's one of the better elements but in another movie that, that would not this wouldn't be very very good and they they don't apply anything very well i don't know at this point i'm rambling so i'm just going to go ahead and end this uh that was my review of either seed 2 if you want to call it that or blood valley seeds revenge uh from 2014 and that was my show uh sam couldn't be on today because i totally forgot but Metal Gear Survive comes out, came out rather, and of course he's going to be completely tied up with that for days. So I don't expect him to be on uh, very much, at least for the next couple of days, but maybe I can coax him away from his PlayStation for like half a minute to do, I don't know, half a review or something. Um, If you uh, enjoyed this uh, podcast, please rate, review, subscribe, whatever it is on whatever platform you found us. Um, If you would uh, like to, the best way that you can help out the show is to share it with someone that you love or someone that you think would be interested uh, in the show. Uh, If you would like to share it, or if you don't like the platform that you found us, we are available on YouTube, Player FM, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and pretty much any podcatcher out there. If you'd like to reach out to us on social media, you can do so on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, I'm on Recluse Horror on all of those. Or you can email me at recluseshorror at gmail.com. Yeah, if you actually did see Seed 1 and uh, have any... And I mean, I don't even know what to, what you would clarify at this point, but if if the, if it does make more sense, if you've seen both and uh, you do believe that it makes more sense having seen the first one, I, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I just, 
it was terrible. That movie was terrible. Or if you have any recommendations for better movies or um, specifically I'm looking for, I think, haunting movies. And what was the other one I talked about? I don't know. I can't remember. But haunting movies specifically, I just have never seen very many good ones. It would be great to see one that was worth watching. I've talked about it a few times. Uh, so if you have any suggestions for that, just, you know, send them my way. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's it. Uh, have a great night, and thanks for listening. Bye.